So today we've got a very, very special guest um, who's going to perform an incredible feat for you. Uh, to introduce the special guest, I brought my multiplying monkeys. Um, so here's uh, one of those multiplying monkeys. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very old toy, uh, patented in 1916. And I actually got one of those original toys here. Um, so it comes in this box and out comes the educated monkey. And so what the monkey does is uh, it multiplies. And it does this by moving around the feet. I've got a bit of a movie here to, to, to show this to you. Okay, so at the moment the feet are at 2 and 11. And so the window shows 22. Now we'll move the uh, legs around a bit. So now we are at 2 times 9, which is 18. And now we move the feet again. So this time from here. Now it's 5 times 9, which is 45. Um, now you can't actually move the feet all the way together to five. So to do squares, you need some a special trick. So for squares, we actually move things out all the way to here to the special symbol. So the, that foot goes out to the special symbol. And then we've got 25 happening at the moment. And to get the other squares, we just move that leg there. Okay. So we move this leg, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. Yeah. So very nice. It actually comes with a little bit of a card here. So you can, you can slide this card behind, and so that will replace all the numbers. And when you use it with this card, you can also do addition. So quite nice. I've also got two modern versions of this. You can actually buy this. Um, so this is an exact replica of what I've got there, the original toy. And this is kind of a variation. So and they're quite readily available if you want one of those things. Okay, and now we're ready for the, for the main act. Um, the main act is going to be performed by our friend um, x squared. <laughs> so this is just a graph of x squared, and we're going to show you how x squared can multiply and do all kinds of other really amazing things. Okay, so let's just put the x's in. X's are in. Now how do we multiply with the parabola? Okay, I mean, uh, we take a number, 3, and you see it's a bit strange here because I don't have negative numbers on that side, right? So it's, it's both positive numbers on that side and on that side. Anyway, we'll take a 3 and we want to multiply by 4. And so to multiply, what we do is we just make this connection here between this point and that point, and then we get this intersection here with the y-axis, and that's the product. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12. Now, obviously, that could be a coincidence, so let's just move things around a little bit. So here we've got 4 times 5 is 20. Seems to work. Mm, okay, well, let's just think about you know, a couple of scenarios where it's clear that it has to work. Okay, And those are, obviously, the squares. So if we go up to 5 times 5, then obviously up here we are 25. On the other side we have 25. So if we draw the horizontal across, we have to cross at 25. Pretty obvious, right? And for all the other squares too, right? So 3 times 3, 2 times 2, 1 times 1. And, you know, just, just to check it out a little bit before we even think about what's really happening here, well, we're with a 1, 1 times anything should be the same number, right? So 1 times 1 is 1 here, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 5 is 5. What other special numbers do we have? 0. Okay, 0 times 5 is 0. Works very well. Okay, now just in general, uh, if you take any number here and any number there, what you get there is really a times b. Okay, and it's actually fairly easy to calculate. I'll just give you a hint how to do it, and then maybe somebody can do it in the comments. Okay, so I mean, the, the simplest way that I've been able to come up with is. Well, you just realize that up here we are at a squared, okay? And so uh, we just have to add to a squared this distance here. And this distance is really easy to calculate if you know the slope of this red line, okay? Because then you just multiply here this distance, which is a, by the slope, and you get that. So add a squared to whatever that is, and you're done. And how do you get the slope? Also very easy. Um, that triangle here, we know everything. We know that this one here is b squared minus a squared, and we know that this is a plus b. Okay, so maybe somebody can do it in the comments. Right? Okay, so this really works. Now, what else can this do? Okay, now 
Let's have a look at, again, 4 times 5 is 20. And now I'm going to count down from here to 0, okay? So we're going to move that one here. So we're going down to 4. Obviously, result is okay. Uh, down to 3, down to 2, down to 1, down to 0. What comes next? What comes next? Minus 1. Minus 1. <laughs> but there's no minus 1. But let's move it anyway in the right sort of direction here. Ooh, we lost something there. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's move it up a bit. And there, actually, it is, you know, uh, 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. Great. So this works. Uh, what's the next thing you should try? Uh, well, what I want to do is I move, want to move this 4 here uh, towards the right, and eventually I want to end up in the negatives there. Um, Okay, but something interesting is going to happen along the way, and you can kind of see already. Can you see what's going to happen along the way? Mm, no? <laughs> no? Okay, well, just imagine that that square wandering over there, eventually it's going to come into coincidence with the one that's already there. And there's something interesting is going to happen, okay? So let's just do this. Um, so going down, now zoom in, okay? So at the moment we're still okay. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. Good. Now, at the moment, we've got basically this line connecting these two points, right? Now, when the squares come together, the points also come together. And basically, I mean, if you've done calculus, you know exactly what happens then. This, what's called a secant line, a line that cuts across the parabola, turns into a tangent line, a line that touches the parabola at that point there, okay? And so we're going um, down, minus 2. And there we have the tangent line tells us that uh, 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. Perfect. Um, and actually, before we keep on going, I mean, that actually gives you, well, basically the derivative of uh, x squared. Or if you ever want to like, construct uh, a tangent to any of the points here, uh, this actually suggests how you can do it. OK, so let's just choose any point here, for example. That point is hovering above, well, 2 minus 2, that's what corresponds to it. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. So let's just put that point in here. And now we just connect this point with that point, and that should be the tangent. Okay. Perfect. Right. Very nice. Or, I mean, if you want to skip all this and just want a recipe, well, what you should do, if you've got a point up here in the parabola, you just measure this distance, and then you put that same distance down here, and then you make the connection that gives you the tangent line. Right. And obviously, you can also do it on the other side. Same thing. Okay, now back to kind of moving that number here into the negatives this way. All right, so here we go. So 3 goes down again. Now the whole thing turns into tangent. Now we're going to multiply by 0. That's fine. And now we're going to go into the negatives there. And now we actually have negative times negative is positive. How nice is that, right? <laughs> minus 1 times minus 1 is, is plus 1. Okay, but it can do even more. Right? We can do it even more. We don't have to stop there. So the next trick we're going to do is, uh, I mean, this whole multiplying business works for any numbers. So you could have like pi down there and square root of 2, and you can multiply them, and it works. Right? Now, at the moment, what we want to do is we want to focus on, on integers. Okay? We're going to multiply integers. And actually, what I've done here is I've noted the points that on the parabola that correspond to 2, to 3, to 4 on both sides. Okay? And now what I want to do is I want to connect all these points up in all possible ways. All right? So let's just do this. So the first connection is here, which corresponds to 2 times 2. So obviously we get 4. And this time we're actually going to cancel out whatever we get here as products. Okay? So 4 is gone. Next connection is uh, between uh, 2 and 3. So it gives a product of 6. So 6 goes. Right? And now I'm just going to kind of keep on going and uh, getting rid of the products that we get there. So let's keep on going. So, and just one more. And, well, can we see something already? <laughs> just kind of reading up from the bottom. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's five. So what is that? Those are the prime numbers. Those are the prime numbers, exactly. So three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, oh damn, fourteen. Well, fourteen is not prime. So why, why, what's happening here? <laughs> oh, we ran out of numbers. We ran out of numbers. So if you actually drawn the whole parabola and just done the whole thing, like put in all connections, we would actually get all the, all the prime numbers. Right? So this kind of instant primes, right? <laughs> instant primes. Draw the parabola, put all those dots on, make all connections, whoosh, 
you've got all the all the prime numbers. How nice is that? Huh? All of them? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one there. <laughs> but there was a reason, of course, why we didn't start with, with the point that corresponds to 1, 1. Because if you multiply by 1, then we would just get rid of everything, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Another reason why 1 shouldn't be a prime. <laughs> OK. Now, um, it's actually not the end of it. Uh, but I'll just give you some hints, and you can kind of explore those yourself. So these are a couple of things they can explore. So for example, I mean, we can multiply with this thing, but we can also divide. Um, so the symmetry of the parabola has something to do with uh, multiplication being commutative. A times B is equal to B times A. You can actually do square roots in a couple of different ways, in two different ways. Um, there's something very deep uh, within mathematics. And if you know a little bit more, you might know about multiplication or addition on elliptic curves. So see whether you can find some connections between what we've done here and that. And then how does it work for complex numbers? Maybe how would you do other operations or something like this? Actually, I might just show you division quickly, OK? And maybe the symmetry business, and then that's it for today. OK, so division, how do you do it? We want to divide 15 by something. Let's divide it by 3, OK? So the only thing we have to do is connect these two points up and just extend the lines up to there, and we go down. And that's the result. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Well, pretty obvious. OK, what about the symmetry business? Well, 3 times 5 is 15, OK? And now 5 times 3 is 15, obviously. And you can really see you know, that's got a lot to do with the symmetry of the parabola. It's very nice. OK, and that's uh, well, me taking a bow for <laughs> the parabola, because parabola is a bit of a problem doing this. <laughs>